call. Right now? Are we good? Okay, so I'm just about to hit record and... Oh, they just got the other one. Oh, no. Look at that. I think you're good. Oh, we're still up. Okay. Yeah. Okay, there we go. We're good to go. All right, guys. All right. Everybody's ready? So, thank you, guys, for coming out. So, I'm going to finish this off so we can go about the rest of our afternoon. So, again, thank you so much for joining Autism 365 and Leaf Learning Center. So, the traveling therapist is just going to give you a few tips about um, behavior here. So, we're going to talk about how we can support our child through the behaviors, okay? Okay. So this is a quote that I found that I want to share, and I think it's pretty awesome. So I think that everyone has something about themselves that they feel is their weakness, their disability. And I'm certain we all have one because I think of a disability as being anything which undermines our belief and confidence in our own abilities. So I personally like this quote because if I had to go compare to being a jellyfish, I'd be a disability. I'm not a jellyfish. Can't swim, can't sting people. That's not what I do. So um, I heard somewhere before we all um, were fish and told to climb a tree or something like that. Then, of course, we'd all be labeled as disabled. So I, I say that to say we don't focus on what we cannot do. We focus on what we can do. So we focus on our ability. Okay? So what is reinforcement? Okay? Basically, this is our technical definition. It's theory of the process and shaping behavior by controlling the consequences of the behavior. Basically, reinforcement is the way that you you do something to increase or decrease the behavior. You continue to do something um, in order to, to get a result. Okay? So, some desired behaviors we might have like making the bed, meal prep, reading people appropriately, gaining attention appropriately, listening to rules and expectations, and this is just me going off of the field, wonderful world of autism. Um, desired behaviors can be anything, especially when we're working with little children. It can just be learning to speak, learning how to wipe your mouth when you're eating, um, eating appropriately, not chewing with your mouth open or anything like that. So some undesired behaviors, unfortunately, that we encounter sometimes are fighting, violent outbursts, yelling, repetition. Um, and what I mean by repetition is... Um, you know, sometimes we have kids that'll ask the same question over and over. Mom, what are you making? Mom, what are you making? Mom, what are you making? And they're not doing anything wrong, but it's, it's an undesired behavior for some of us. So um, when we talk about reinforcement, we talk about how to either decrease those undesired behaviors or increase the desired behaviors. Okay? So the functions of behaviors is basically asking why does a particular function, um, excuse me, behavior occur. So that can be for social attention. They want something. They want to do something or they want to get a tangible escape or avoidance. They want to get out of something or sensory stimulation. They, they want something to feel good or because something does not feel good. And that is the result of behavior because of these, these are the functions of behavior basically. Okay? So, a few examples. Okay? A comedian telling jokes and making people laugh. Okay? His comedian, the behavior of telling jokes occurred in order to create a favorable outcome. He liked that people laugh, so he's going to continue to tell those jokes. Okay? So, his function of behavior was to make people laugh. He liked that attention. Okay? A child hand slapping for personal enjoyment or self stimulation. Okay? This is believed to be personal enjoyment. Um, however, some people can engage in it for various reasons to obtain attention. A lot of times it's actually sensory um, with the hand slapping in. We refer to that as self um because it's, it's stimulating to the person doing it. Okay? And if you see somebody, you're walking down the mall, you're in Lake Forest or wherever you are, the outlet's walking, and you see somebody that you do not want to speak to. You're going to cross the street. Your function of behavior is to avoid that person. You have now, your behavior was to cross the street so that you can get out of having to confront this person. Okay, so that was your function of that behavior. You avoided it. The hand slapping, it was sensory. The comedian, it was attention. So basically we're getting down to why these behaviors occur. That's what the function of behavior means. 
Okay? So when we want to erase problem behavior, we E explain what is the problem. Okay? You don't just tell a kid or a person, stop. You have to explain to them what the problem is. Now, when we get into children on the spectrum, um, I won't say they don't understand because our goal is to explain it in a way that they can understand. Everybody has the ability to learn. Everybody has the ability to understand what you're saying. It is your job to make sure that you are able to, to get it to them in a way that they can understand. Okay? The reason that they are having this problem behavior, what is he or she getting out of, of the behavior or what are they avoiding? Okay, what is the function? You're going back to those functions of behavior. That's your reason. Okay? A, appropriate. What do you want him or her to do instead? So the thing with behaviors, if you're trying to decrease or increase behavior, you have to replace it. So if you have a child that's, um, say, chewing on their clothes, you want to avoid that behavior, so you want to give them something to replace that. You may give them uh, soft chewy um, or gum or something that's just going to make them feel good because you don't want to take away from what they need sensory-wise. Um, we're not going to stop doing what makes us feel good. So that's just a lost battle, okay? <laughs> you want them to stop chewing on their clothes, but it's best if you replace the behavior by giving them something else to chew on, okay? So pork, how can you help this happen more often, okay? And that's getting back to those desired behaviors. And that goes into your reinforcement. You want to give good praise. Let them know that they're doing a good job. Once you get them to stop it, you don't praise them at one time and say, all right, we're done. You want to keep it going, okay? That's how you're going to increase those desired behaviors. Evaluate. How will you know if it works? Well, the thing with the wonderful world of autism, it may work today. It may not work tomorrow. It does not mean you stop. What is very important with this field and people, period, is that consistency, okay? You have to keep it going. You can't just stop because it worked one time. You praise them that one time and say, all right, that's good. We're done. Not going to happen. You got to keep it going. Okay? Okay? How prompting works and how it helps. So we have a level of prompting. Okay? And I'm just going to go through this briefly. And, um, of course, we can talk about it more if you give me a call. So our first level of prompting, I'm going to get out of order for a second here. Because when I work with students, I like to model first. You model first because you're showing them what you want them to do. Um, so you don't just say, you know, sit at the table with big hands. You show them how to sit at the table. You show them how to wipe their mouth. You show them how to get your attention if you want them to say something um, instead of hitting. If they always hit you and they want mom for a bottle of juice, you have to show them. Mom, I would like a bottle of juice. If you have a child that cannot speak, then that's when you get into your sign language or your picture support. Okay? But don't just yell at them. For one, they probably don't understand and don't un they don't care you're yelling. <laughs> you're going to make yourself mad and your child is still throwing stuff at you to get your attention. Just show them. Okay? But your prompting is independent. That's when they're able to do it on their own. Um, and it, so, again, let me work backwards. So, after you model it, if your child needs the support, your next is going to be probably a full physical prompt, which is when you can put your hand directly over there to show them what to do. You're touching them physically to get them to do the desired behavior. Your partial physical is when you may just touch them a little to remind them of what to do. So if you're telling your child, all right, we're going to brush our teeth, they have the toothbrush in their hand and now they're stuck, you may um, nudge their shoulder or their elbow to get them to move again, and then they'll continue going. Okay, that's called a partial physical prompt. Your gesture is when you're just going to point or you're going to move something forward for them to see it. Um, so again, back to this toothbrushing, they're stuck, you're just going to point at the toothbrush, you're not going to say anything, because that would be your verbal. So that could be indirect or direct. Direct would be, hey, you need to brush your teeth. Indirect would be, what should you be doing? Okay, and then they'll say, brushing my teeth, and then they'll continue to go. So you have two types of verbal prompting. Independent is that one we all love, we all strive for. That is when they are doing it on their own. But it takes time, and don't get discouraged if you have to juggle between these a few times on the same task. It's okay. We forget things all the time. I know I do. Okay, so I want you to take a look at this map. 
I saw this somewhere before, and I thought it was a very interesting comparison. So this looks pretty simple to us. We know it's a map of the U.S., and the lines are pretty basic. So if someone tells me, go from east coast to west coast, probably going to pick here, just go, mm, and I'm just going to travel over here, boom, I'm there. Ask the child on the autism spectrum to do that. This is what it could possibly look like. Okay, the way that they think, it, it may take them a few more lines or a few more paths to finally get to what you're trying to say. So they may, it, and it's not even just autism spectrum, it's any unique learning need. And that is why we have to be patient when we're working with these children, even our own children. Um, because like I said, I went from there to here, but now a child that has a unique learning need and their brains are wired differently, they're going to have to go through here, here, find that pattern. And that's when you may see some of that getting stuck, some of that frustrating getting in, because they know they need to go this way, but their brain is telling them to go and do all this other stuff. Okay? So you have to be really patient and know what you're doing with, with your child. Okay? So supporting your child. We need to maintain positive communication with your child's school therapy professionals, and anyone that supports your child. These are people that are working on you and your child's behalf. The worst thing you can do is have a nasty attitude with someone that's just trying to help. We understand you're frustrated. I personally can only imagine um, the things that you deal with around the clock. You know, you, you have to adjust schedules and all this stuff, but we're only here to help. So maintain that positive communication. Ask questions. We can't help you if we don't know that you don't know. Okay? Be consistent. That is so important. A lot of times I hear, oh, well, my child doesn't do this at school, but when they get home, they do X, Y, Z. Well, for one, the school setting is very different, but there are a lot of things that are done at school and in therapy sessions that can translate into home. You just have to ask for that support, and I'm, you know, I'm, you know we're here at least. We're happy to show any families that need to know what to do at home to maintain that consistency and a lot of it is that structured schedule. Some kids just cannot have unstructured time. Okay, remember that each child is unique and all techniques don't work for every child, nor will every day be the same. You can have two Michaels, both born on September 10th, both same weight, all that stuff. They will have two different abilities. No child is the same. And you can try to use the same technique, it will not work. It will fail you every time. You'll be upset with yourself. Don't be upset with Michael. Okay? Continue to be a voice for your child. You are their biggest advocate. Okay? We as professionals, we are going to advocate, but your voice reigns over ours. Okay? So make sure you, you continue to be their voice. Okay? And of course, if you have any questions, comments, concerns about anybody that you've seen here, you can reach out on our website. You can shoot us an email. Um, that's our telephone number, and this is where we are physically located. All of the presenters here today, um, their information will be located on the website sometime this week, as well as the pro uh, PowerPoint presentations. If you have trouble seeing it through the stream, um, you can feel free to go on there. And if you would like to set up a session um, for that, then we can, you know, schedule that through our scheduling tool. But, of course, as you know, we offer family training, educational consulting, homework help, academic intervention, and we have so much more coming in the fall. So make sure that you stay tuned. Continue to follow Learn with Leaf on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Google Plus, all this good stuff. Okay? Thank you all for coming out. I truly appreciate it, and I hope you all have a great day. Thank you for hanging with the traveling therapist.